Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna learn about volumes of solids with known cross sections. Suppose we have a region that lies between two curves. This region will serve as the base of a solid. Let's take a look at the XY plane from a different angle to get a three-dimensional perspective. So here we have the same region that will serve as the base of a solid. And from this base, we can have many different cross-sectional shapes emerge, and an infinite number of cross-sectional shapes would form a solid. For example, we might have a solid that has square cross-sections, like this. If we put many of these square cross sections side by side, a solid starts to emerge. We can also have solids with isosceles right triangle cross sections like this. We can even create solids with semicircle cross sections like this. As you can see, we can have a variety of cross sectional shapes. These are just a few examples. Now let's talk about how to find the volume of one of these solids. Here's the main idea. The first thing we need to do is find the volume of a single cross section. We'll call this dv, and that's equal to the area of the cross-section times the width, dx. Then, to find the volume of the entire solid, we need to take the integral from a to b of a of x dx. Let's do some example problems. Example 1, square cross-sections. The region between f of x equals radical x and g of x equals x squared forms the base of a solid. Cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Set up the integral that represents the volume of the solid. So to set this up, we need to find the area of one cross-section. Remember that the area of a square is side squared, and the side of this square is f of x minus g of x. That means the height of the square is also f of x minus g of x. Now we can write an equation for a of x, the area of the cross-section. This would be f of x minus g of x squared. Then we can write an equation for dv, the volume of one cross-section, which is a of x dx. And now we can write the integral that represents the volume of the solid, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. Note that 0 and 1 are x values. The region starts at x equals 0 and ends at x equals 1, where the curves intersect. Example 2, isosceles right triangle cross sections. We'll use the same region as the previous example, but now cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are isosceles right triangles with a leg on the base. Set up the integral that represents the volume of the solid. Now we know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height, and the base and height of an isosceles right triangle are the same if a leg is the base. That means a of x equals one half times the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared because the base and height are both f of x minus g of x. And we know that dv equals a of x dx. So now we can write the integral that represents the volume of the solid. And that's one half times the integral from zero to one of the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. Note that this is almost the same integral that we got for the square cross sections. The only difference is that we're now multiplying by a factor of one half. Let's do one more example, rectangle cross sections. We'll use the same region between radical x and x squared, but this time cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are rectangles with a height equal to three times the base. Set up the integral that represents the volume of the solid. Well, we know that the area of a rectangle is base times height and the base of the region is f of x minus g of x. That means the height is three times the quantity of f of x minus g of x. That means a of x equals three times the quantity of f of x minus g of x times f of x minus g of x. And that means dv equals three times the quantity of f of x minus g of x squared dx. That means the volume of the solid is three times the integral from zero to one of f of x minus g of x squared dx. In the next video, we'll look at some trickier examples of volumes with known cross sections. For now, make sure that you understand the big idea that the volume is the integral from a to b of a of x dx. And that's how you rock calculus.